morning, everybody. It's about seven o'clock Wednesday morning. It's the kids, 7.05. It's the kids' second day of homeschool. We do a Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule. And uh, I figured I'd bring y'all along. First thing I did this morning when I woke up around six was make the bed, freshen up. I chit-chatted with my husband for a little bit and um, strained up our room a little. And I came out here to see the condition that the kids left the house in. And they usually do what they have to do. They're over there sleeping in their quarters, girls' room to the right, boys' room to the left, bathroom in between. And um, I came out here and everything looked good. I went ahead and got all their iPads and their notebooks already on the table for them. Usually they do that. I wanted to just bless them that way. They moved. Yesterday, someone had a good idea of moving this one pepper shaker, the little greenery, and the napkin over there because it's usually on the table. But now with so many kids, it's in the way while we're learning. So I went ahead and just, you know, did that this morning. Lit myself a candle. I went ahead and crossed off the next day of, from the calendar so they know what day to mark down that they're working on. Um, I filled my water bottle and uh, did a little bit of straightening that was for me to do. The, the kitchen looks pretty much like this, but if there's something in here that they know, you know, this is the parent's stuff and we should just let them handle that, those are the things that I went ahead and handled. It wasn't much, just a little bit of things. I have some hair um, bleach here because we cut down Isaiah's hair because it was getting so long, it just became hard to manage. So, and I know he likes the, the tips blonde. So I got some of this yesterday from the store. Ernest is gonna cut the boys here today and I'll go ahead and bleach Isaiah's tips. Um, Masani, my nephew, right now he has a whole head of hair, but we agreed, he wants locks. But I said, well, how about if you cut around here and just had locks on top so that I don't have yet another full head of locks to do. Um, and to keep up. So that was our compromise. So his uncle is gonna cut his hair today and then I'll lock his hair up. Um, what else did I do this morning? Um, just little things like I had some like wall spackle in a tube. I had that put out for a little chunk of the wall that my nephew CJ accidentally took out with the laundry basket. So I, I had that out, just little stuff, you know. So I, I did my part and now the house is ready for the kids. They're gonna get up at eight and the goal is to get them sitting down by like 8.40, the latest. Um, sitting down at the table, getting a good hour, 30 minutes in before breakfast. Breakfast is between 10 and 11. I tell them they're not even allowed to ask me what's for breakfast. They can look at this chalkboard if I have it up there. If not, they'll see. They know they're going to eat between 10 and 11. I didn't even write down the breakfast today. I did write the, um, yesterday was supposed to be lunch, a salad for lunch, but they'll have that today instead. And then I wrote down dinner. I'll make some tilapia with some corn on the cob and roasted potatoes for dinner. That helps me to not have to answer the same question 5,000 times a day. And on this side, I found it was helpful to have the kids bedtime. These are the later times because tomorrow is not a homeschool day. So when it's not a homeschool day, they go to bed a little later. Um, you know, when, I, when the homeschool day isn't coming up. Uh, and on Fridays, we really let them go to bed late. Like the big ones will have them go to bed at like 11.30 and the little ones like 11 o'clock because Saturday mornings, we don't have anything going on yet. I just signed them up yesterday for soccer. This soccer league is fantastic. There's a lot of homeschool families that I find that takes advantage of it um, and uses it to their benefit. You know, that's why it's there. It can be hard with parents of multiples when there just isn't enough days of the week to keep up with all the practices and all the games. Well, with soccer, it gives them the feeling of being a part of a team for eight weeks out of um, that season, 
and it's on Saturday mornings. They practice the first half and then they do games the second half and they rotate. Um, and the league is growing. So I noticed that in the emails, they're like, first come, first serve, you know, get your kids in there because they've been filling up and it's really inexpensive. It's like $30 a kid. They get a t-shirt, they get a Chick-fil-A meal at the end of the season, you know, just to, um, you know, kind of say good job for putting your best foot forward. It's, there's no like playoffs or anything, you know, it's not that formal, but it's something to look forward to, you know? Um, and then you get a discount if you coach. I've coached twice, uh, but this time around with my niece and nephew, I wanna kind of keep an eye on them and make my rounds to the different little games based on what age they are and all that. It is co-ed, so it's like, it doesn't get any better than this when it comes to getting the kids active without driving the parents nuts. So we'll be taking them and doing that. I think it's from um, the end of September to the end of November, right before Thanksgiving. Perfect, it's hot weather right now, so it's gonna be even cooler. It's gonna be really good. Um, and now I'm gonna have my time with the Lord between now and eight. It may not run that whole time, but I like to give myself a nice chunk of time to just not even think, have to think about what the time is and just dive in. So y'all can come along with me. And um, my goal today is to pop in and out with the transitions. So, you know, y'all could see me in worship and Bible, reading my Bible a little bit, and then I might just fast forward that. And then once the kids get up, I'll let y'all see that. Um, I did the first day of school video, but I find that 80% of it was fast forwarded. And um, I don't feel like if you weren't here, then, then you felt like you were here. I didn't feel like that. You know what I mean? I feel like I need to capture the transitions more, do a little more, more explaining of what's going on, stuff like that. So I'm still learning, um, and I really want this channel to be like a, a um, vlog kind of channel anyhow. So we'll try again today. I, I am happy with how the video turned out. There were some, you know, I think it may have answered some questions people may have had, and it was entertaining to watch. The kids were so funny. But um, if you're really looking to see how does the day unfold, you know, um, I'm looking to make this that kind of video for y'all. So, all right. I left my tripod in the living room. So I'll see y'all in a minute. I realized that I did not mention why if the kids wake up at eight, why is it not until 8.40 that they're sitting down to do their work? Well, of course, it's because they have devotional that they have to do and they have their chores. I did show the chore chart in the last video, but just to sum it up, they have um, to make all everyone makes their bed. They have their self care and then everyone has a chore that they do every day. It doesn't change. Then they have a rotating chore chart that's more like, you know, dishes, kitchen floor and dining room floor, wiping the countertops um doing the laundry dusting wiping down the appliances those things rotate so um between 8 and 8 40 they make themselves acquainted with whatever new, new chore they have for the day they do all the chores that don't change for the day and they do their devotional and then they sit down and they do their work until i'm done with breakfast when i'm done with breakfast then we all sit down and that's when we do our together work like history, science, art, um, PE, health, music, things like that. Um, and it works well because I'm usually not eating that early in the day. So my mouth isn't full of food and I can lead their together work while they all eat. Then when they're done eating, they go back and they split up and they do what, they finish up whatever they needed to do for the day. Um, if it's a rigorous kind of day and if they're having, you know, some kind of like fatigue mentally and they need a break, then they will get a break um, after that. But most days it's our goal to work straight through because the curriculum that we use 
intertwines games within their day that are also learning games, but it doesn't feel like learning. So it's kind of like a, a break within itself. But I like to just gauge how each kid is doing and ask them to be honest with me. And they already know a break doesn't mean that you don't have to go back and do your work. So a lot of times they won't want to break because they want to get done and not have to think about it. So we just work together and figure that out. So um, then after breakfast, they split off. Then um, I'm, I'm available the whole time. I'm walking around, sipping my coffee, whatever, helping. And um, if they're still working and it's like snack time, then I'll try to get them to finish um, what, whatever subject they're on. Because you kind of get on a roll when you're in that subject. So I try to get everyone to finish up whatever subject, sub subject they're on. Then they all eat lunch together. Every time the kids sit to eat, I have them do it together. I find that when they were toddlers, it was just easier that way. Because if you order everything like a daycare, they're hungry at the same time. They're sleepy at the same time, you know, all of that. So I just kept with that through the years. And even now more so that we have the other two with us. And it lends for community. It lends to community and to talking as we're sitting and eating together every single meal. Um, and they also have a chart because everyone has their own favorite snack, right? And I don't want to look up and like all of the good snacks are gone. So I made a little chart of what they're supposed to rotate. So even with the snacks, oh, it's a pretzel day, you know, and then they'll have a starch like pretzels, a fruit, which they can just choose because no one's fighting over the fruits and a protein, which also they can choose like turkey sticks or even turkey slices or peanuts pistachios, whatever. So every snack, I ask them to have it consist of that and they know the amount. Um, and so, yeah, we took out the time to discuss all of that, to enforce that so that I'm not here making a snack for a 10 year old that is very capable. <laughs> so um, there's a lot of repetition, a lot of routine and um, boundaries, but when you look at my kids and my, you know, my niece and nephew, they're happy um, and I'm happy. You know, I don't have to go to bed after they, they go to bed. I can go to bed beforehand. Most nights I do. I just come out in the middle of the evening just to look or even that next morning just to look and see how they did. And I commend them when they do well. And when maybe someone left something out, hey, don't forget to get this. And it works, you know. So anyhow, they have their meals together. Um, and after lunch, there's no more, you know, snacks um, until we're finished with homeschool. Then we finish up homeschool and then they can have their snack. And then before you know it, it's time for me to work on dinner, which I always have at least two kids helping me cooking at all times, helping me cook at all times. I call it um, home economics, <laughs> but it helps them to, to get familiar with how to move around the kitchen. Leia, my 11 year old, she's very proud of herself. She knows how to make rice. And one evening she made dinner. She made rice with some beanies and weenies and she was so proud and I'm so proud of her. Um, so the, the longer we do this, you know, the more they're comfortable they get. And before you know it, we'll have teenagers and they'll be rotating on whose turn it is to cook dinner that day, you know? Uh, and this is, this is good for me because everything doesn't fall on me. I'm just, I'm delegating, I'm supervising, but I'm not doing everything, you know? Um, laundry gets done throughout the day there's a person that has laundry you know it, it rotates um that used to be something i would do by myself all the cleaning i used to do by myself because remember my kids are like a year and a half apart each and there's four of them so ej was only four when i had isaiah the youngest and he was newborn and we had two in between uh, so i just developed practices that helped lift the load off of me and um if it's not broke, don't fix it, right? So when they're done with homeschool, what's today, Wednesday, we'll most likely go outside. They love to play out in the front. There's a small hill right in front of our yard. They know how far to go, you know, cause I sit out there, I watch for cars, I, you know, and um, they know how far down the street to go both ways. 
the big ones, EJ, Leia, they're allowed to go around um, if they let me know that's what they're doing. So I'm not looking for them. We live in a, you know, a closed community here. And um, yeah, so we'll do that. Come back in, they'll have their showers and then I'll start dinner and I'll grab two kids who had, hasn't helped me in a while to help me cook dinner. Then we all eat dinner together. They clean up, they have their free time. My husband and I go in our room and they know if the door is closed, don't knock unless it's an emergency. This is our time. So that's what the day will look like. And I'm hoping to remember to bring you along in the transitions. So let's do this. Father, I thank you. Thank you for another day to bring you glory, to let your love pour on me and for me to pour that love back out to my loved ones and to my community. Be with me, be in my thoughts, Lord God. Help me, Lord, to, to think before I say anything that's contrary to your word. Help me, Holy Spirit, put the words in my mouth when my flesh wants to take control. Give me discernment, Lord, so that I can know how to be there for these, these children you've allowed me to care for. Be with all six of them today. Help them, Lord, to hear from you today, to be led by you, to feel your touch, to feel your warmth, to know that you're proud of them and that you're rooting them on. Um, be in their devotional times. Help it not to just be routine. Help them to meet you, Father, and to know that you're there and you're with them and you're teaching them and leading them and touching them in, in a way that only you can, God. Thank you for the privilege, Lord, of homemaking. Help me, Father, as much as lies within me to spread your love and your truth in everything that I do. And I thank you, Father. I thank you so much. Be with my husband, Lord, while he is at work. Give him wisdom. Give him discernment, Lord God. Give him strategy. Guide and lead him, Father, and keep him safe as he rides home. Keep the kids safe while they're playing and riding their bikes and their scooters and so forth. Just be with us, Lord Father, in Jesus' name. Help the kids to believe that they can do the hard thing. They can learn this concept that they may be a little intimidated by. Help them, Father, not to allow themselves to speak death over themselves, but help them to speak life and to find the power in that um, and to agree with you that they truly can do all things through Christ who strengthens them. I usually lean towards looking at Romans because I just love Romans. Um, and I do have a devotional that my husband and I, we do it together, um, him and his time, me and my time on our phone. And we respond through a video chat so that we can listen to the response and respond ourselves in our own time. I will do that after I do this. Um, but today I'm just cracking open the Bible. Um, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth at the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth, for you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ who is our life shall appear, then shall he also appear with him in glory. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence and covetousness, which is idolatry, for which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience, in, this, in the which ye also walk some time when ye live in them, but now ye also put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth, lie not to one another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him 
that created him. I love this scripture because it talks about how do you know when you're living under the Lordship of Christ? We can fool ourselves, especially if we're not into blatant, flat out sin, you know? But if I, in all of my free time, am scrolling social media, uh, what does that say, you know? If I have an appetite for, for that for hours, but it's a struggle for me to get in the word or a struggle for me to pray um, or for me to go and volunteer and, and do something uh, productive, then I'm not in the right place, you know? Seek those things which are above. Seek to do something that's going to glorify God. Seek to do something that's going to build you up. Even if it's something like a little hobby that may not have any spiritual significance but at least you're not intaking this filth on a regular basis because whatever comes in you is gonna come out so this is just a good reminder of um, the boundaries that where we ought to live by and what we should be seeking it gives me joy when i'm able to let's just say bless someone there was a foster mom who still goes to our our church but she, her daughter, she was black, the foster mom was white, and she didn't know how to care for her hair. So for years, I I installed her locks for her, and for years, I did her retwists until she didn't want locks anymore. But I did that out of a ministry, and I always felt like this is where God wants me. You know, like I'm doing something that's a blessing to her, right? They have 20 kids, her and her husband, between the two of them. And I didn't feel led to charge her. And so that became a ministry for me. And that was so fulfilling because I was meeting a need, right? And God was being glorified. So if I spend too much time, you know, scrolling through um, YouTube shorts, because that's what I like to watch, you know, something quick. I like to watch a little cute stuff, the heartwarming stuff, but you can't choose what you're going to see next. So it's like, after a little bit of time, you know, I'm like, okay, that's enough of this. Let me play a Bible trivia game on my phone, right? Um, or find something that I could do to bless someone. So anyhow, um, setting our affection on things above, right? And those things are way more fulfilling when we, the Bible says it's more blessed to give than to receive. And that's true because when we're giving, I've heard someone say, you're no more like God than when you're giving. It's, it just feels right. And um, whatever we might be looking for to fill our voids when we are overindulging in entertainment, it's like a fast track to feeling fulfilled when you're saying, God, use me. God, help me to be a blessing to someone else. Lord, show me how to get out of this rut of, maybe this is the norm of what I do with all my free time, but show me that if there's something else, I could volunteer and do something, you know? And I found that I felt more fulfilled doing something productive um, or helping someone uh, or even just reading a good, clean book was more fulfilling than just opening myself up to whatever may pop up next on my feed, you know? All right. I don't want to make this video super long, so I will fast forward the rest. Okay. <laughs> I'm just going to go for it. Hopefully it won't be too long. Verse 12, put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, right? Because God is very merciful to us. Kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. I talk to the kids about that when it seems like they want to kind of hold a grudge a little. And I'm like, 
there's going to come a time where you're going to need the same person to forgive you. Don't hold a grudge. It's not worth the day. The offense, has, it's passed already. They've apologized. Move on. How many times a day do you all offend me and your father or me and your uncle? What if we held on to that? We would be angry people, right? And is that the life um, on earth as it is in heaven that God tells us to pray for? No, that's not conducive to a heavenly home when you're holding a grudge. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God ruled in your hearts to the which also you are called in one body and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. We have a rule that we don't play music unless it glorifies God in, in our home. And um, we did try to, but we had left this church that was very very legalistic and so we allowed ourselves to try things that didn't seem outright wrong um that we weren't allowing ourselves to try simply because we went to that church one of them was secular music now we weren't listening to like meg stallion things that were just awful but maybe like an oldie um something that warmed our heart reminded us of our childhood things like that but then when i thought about it and I would hear my kids singing these songs. It's like, it's not a bad song, but it's a man, you know, it's not maybe as bad in my mind as some of these songs that are, you know, newer, but do I want my son singing this song? Do I want my daughter singing this song, right? And so we just took the safe route and said, let's just not play music unless it glorifies God, because when you get into gray area, then the kids can say the same, you know, well, mom, this is not your kind of music, but what's the difference between this song and the song that you listen to? And we didn't want that. So we just, you know, it made it plain. <laughs> um, and I'm here, I'm watching, I'm looking at verse 16, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. It's just, when you know, you know, right? It's just the feeling you get when you know that the God of creation can trust you to use every faculty that you have to glorify him, to do good in this earth. You're not holding anything back from him. You're not saying, no, Lord, you can have everything else, but not this. That's an idol then. Lord, you can have all of me. When you created me, you created me with a purpose, and I wanna see how much good, how much better I can leave this earth after I've allowed you to use me. You know, it, it's just a good feeling to have killed that old man and that old way of living, that living for yourself, that selfishness, that worldly mentality, and to say, God, I trust you. And I trust you to do with this life more than I could ever. And the sense of purpose and peace and fulfillment, it's better than anything else. I was watching YouTube shorts and I saw this lady talking about how Adam and Eve, they bought the lie. It's like, it was an advertisement that this fruit is going to be so amazing. It's gonna give you something you never had and it's gonna be fantastic. And it was false advertisement. And isn't that what sin does? right? The world will tell you, oh, you know, you need attention. If you just get attention, you'll be good. Just wear all the scandalous clothes and throw yourself around. And that just seems like the high life. That's the advertisement. That's the lie. But then when you get into that life and you feel cheapened, you feel like just the number when you're laying around with different people, when you put on those clothes and it's not only the cute guys that are going to look at you. It's going to be everyone looking at you. And you're going to feel like a piece of meat. And what do you do when you get a little older and everything isn't as tight as it used to be? Where's your identity? You know, and people really idolize their self-image. But it's like they're insatiable because that's not what's meant to quench you. 
Um, so this word, it's, it's alive and it's healing. And there's the truth. The Bible says the truth will set you free. There's so much freedom in it. And I always kick myself when I snack on the word or say a short prayer and that's what I've had for the day. And it's like, my flesh says check, you know, and the word is always good, but it's like, I feel so much more satisfied when I had a meal, when I really get in there and let the Lord speak to my heart and my mind and, and apply it. And when I get into prayer and I just lay before him, it's so much better than snacking and raising. All right. It's almost eight. So I'm going to have some prayer time. And then I'm going to bring y'all along while the kids are waking up. eight so the kids are going to start waking up someone's already in the bathroom good morning <laughs> time to get up guys it's eight it's time to get up and get going chores and devotional yes baby okay then you need to go to bed earlier next time sweetie it's time to get up we have to get going we have school let's lay in the bathroom myla and ayana time to get up you see she has a trundle that rolls out and then they roll it back when she's done time to get up sweetie pie let's go okay good morning good morning myla time to get up sweetie Time to get up, Myla. Let's go, baby. Kids are doing their chores. Okay, it's 8.15. Myla opened up the blinds. That's her job. I do this for her because she can't reach this one. Let's see what everybody else has going on. Leia already vacuumed the living room. I hear the vacuum going. The boys get ready in my in their bathroom and the girls get ready in mine. Good job, Masani. Masani made up the bed as well. Girls are getting their stuff together. Very good. Where's Milo? In my bathroom? Who's next? Who's next for the vacuum? You all done, baby? Very good. Put your stuff away. Why are you looking like that? Why are you squinting? I got <laughs> All right, it's 821. Isaiah is vacuuming the hallways. They're finishing up. Isani freshening up. The girls, I hear them in here. So y'all done with y'all chores? Yeah, all I have to do is vacuum, but after I'm done. All right, well then you can start your work yeah, while he's vacuuming, right? Yeah. Very good, I'm very proud of y'all. Thank you. Oh, I love you. Okay. You ready to do your work? Everybody Once everybody's out, then you can do the bathroom floor. You can do the rug now. You can go take the rug and beat it up against that tree. Beat it yeah, you get to beat something up every morning.
Huh? In your room? Yes. Very good. Thank you, Miss Ani. I just finished the devotional. I'm watching my husband's video response and I'll send one to him while I am working on the video for today. Good. Let me see how many you got more. Okay, good. All right, so you, so you go back to your school. Careful for this kid. No, 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 it's in the 10th place, so it's four tens. What's four times 10? Right, so that's, that's value four. What about the six? It's worth how much? So it's six. You understand? No, you, you put one because it's in the ones place. It's a value of three because it's three ones. You understand? Okay. Go on, Sonny. Okay, y'all, so it's 1026, and this is where we are. She's studying some spelling, I'm editing still. He's working on Khan Academy. Ayana's finished with her individual work, so is EJ, so I had them help Ayana crack the eggs, EJ cooked them, and there's leftover oatmeal I just put in the oven, that I'm, not the oven, microwave, that I'm gonna mix up and they'll have their breakfast. Alright. Why do we need to know God? This is a good one. Alright. Why do we need to know God? If we're going to be a disciple of Jesus, we should know whom we are following. We'll be starting our lesson with the attributes of God. His characteristics, and we know who and what we know he's like. But for this lesson, I just wanted to make sure you had your why. Why do we need to learn things about God? Why is it important to know him? Okay, it's about 12.20. Everybody's done. They're playing, enjoying their downtime. In a few minutes, they're going to have their snack. I'm still editing the first portion of the video. In fact, it's 13 minutes after 11. I'm eating leftover Chinese from an in-house date night my husband and I did last night. And the kids are making themselves snack. A pig running from a cheetah. Hey y'all, so I was gonna do a spend the day with me video, but it's taking so long to edit, and it's gonna be a very long video. So I'll just make this a spend the beginning of the day video video with me. You all will see plenty of us coming up. Masani just got his hair cut. Um, Masani and Leah helped me cook dinner. We watched a little fear factor. What else did we do? Um, 
Masani's hair was a whole, you know, a whole thing because we had to first of all take down those twists. I had to figure out where I wanted to make the parts, cut off the excess hair. Ernest went ahead and cut it. Isaiah's getting his hair cut now. Once he's done with his hair cut, they're gonna wash up and then we'll have dinner. I'm gonna have my shower, I'm sweating. Um, and um, we didn't do outside time because it said it, it kept saying it was gonna rain, but then it didn't do much more than a drizzle. Oh well, it was an inside day. They'll spend some time outside. All right, y'all. See y'all next time and don't forget to embrace your space.